clock just hit 11.30, so go ahead and get started. Uh, so everybody, welcome. Appreciate you coming in here. This is Erasing the Stigma, Mental Illness in Tech. I'm JD Flynn. I am a Drupal developer, architect at Genuine. Uh, if you want to tweet about this, uh, I'm at JD Does Dev on all the slacks. I'm Dorf on, on D.O. I'm Dorficus. Uh, in case you didn't know, we're at Flippin' DrupalCon, so that's pretty amazing. Um, so, also, hashtag DrupalCon and hashtag Osmi. Does anybody in here know what Osmi is? A few people. That's good. Uh, well, I'll talk about them a little bit later. Uh, so, <clears throat> hello. It's best to start off with a big friendly greeting, so hello. Um, <laughs> thanks for coming in. Um, also, this is a conversation. This isn't me talking to you about me. This is me talking with you about us. So it, it's two way, it may be pretty one-sided right now, but I consider it a conversation. I, I see some familiar faces, but for those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm a Drupal PHP developer, been doing that for about six years now. I've been doing HTML since the 90s. I help organize MidCamp. Um, I help organize the Drupal Chicago meetup. And before all of this, I was a paramedic and a firefighter for a while. Uh, I also have mental illness. So a couple disclaimers, too, that I like to start off with. I am not a mental health professional, nor am I here to give any kind of medical advice. I'm just somebody with mental illnesses. Also, I tend to swear without thinking about it, so I'm apologizing ahead of time. So there are a few reasons I do this talk, but the main one is I want to start the conversation. Just you know, rhetorical kind of question, how many of you are comfortable talking about mental illness? Well, good, good, okay. What are y'all doing here then? <laughs> uh, so what do most people think of the mentally ill? And when I say most people, I mean in general. I, it's usually negative, it's they're dangerous, they're unstable, they're weak, is this person gonna kill me? The answer is usually no. I'm also here, I'm gonna share some resources and statistics, share some of my experiences and you know, because I've seen what untreated mental illness can do. And also, I really want to help people realize that nobody's going through this alone. You know, kind of put it in a PHP Drupal sense. It may have different variables and methods, but the interface is kind of the same. So I'm still having a really hard time dealing with this fact. Uh, even though I'm telling you this, I'm having a hard time believing it. So I understand how difficult that may be. Also, it needs to be talked about. I want all of you to be comfortable having a conversation, which from the hands earlier, it looks like you are. Uh, we can take away the stigma around mental illness by talking about it. And all of you are here, and you're all taking the right steps. Even if you don't have mental illness yourself, thank you for being here, and thank you for being part of this. In case you're asking, why should you care? Number one, because we're human. Uh, and people are good. Also. 20% of US adults experience a mental illness in a year. And we're gonna find out later that that number is a little bit higher in the tech community. For me, as I mentioned, I have mental illnesses, plural. I suffered in silence for a very long time. I was in denial. I thought that saying there was something wrong with me, admitting that I had a problem would make me weaker or put a label on me. And I thought that being diagnosed meant somebody was damaged or defective or you know, just not right. And I worried that if I told people how I felt, they wouldn't want to be around me. I'd lose the few connections I had. But something I always needed to tell myself repeatedly is I'm not weak, I'm sick. I'm not defective, I'm, I have a disease. It's, not, it's, it's a disorder, not a decision. All right, so you're gonna learn a lot more about me in the next few minutes. So I want to learn a little bit about you. Uh, how many of you are developers here to learn development, here to do site, you know, anything building site related? Okay, quite a few of you, great. How many of you are project managers, uh, project owners, account managers, you know, along that, that line of things? Couple, okay. Are any of you in HR? No hands, great. <laughs> And how many of you are in upper management, managers, presidents, CEOs, that level? 
pretty high up. Okay, got a few of them. Now, the question on everybody's mind, other than who is this guy and why is he talking, is what is mental illness? And that's a pretty wide range of definitions, but boiled down is it's a wide range of mental health conditions that affect your mood, thinking, and behavior. So several things. There's a book called the DSM-5, is the latest version of 2017, and it stands from the floor to about here of various criteria that you have to meet to be diagnosed. Uh, so that changes, it evolves, they change names, uh, but that's, that's what they go off of now. Now it's time for me to tell you about me. Um, I have a few things, like I said, several times I have mental illnesses. What I have is major depression, anxiety disorder, PTSD, and ADHD. I'm just one diagnosis away, diagnosis away from mental health bingo and so those are all lots of letters. Uh, depression. It's feelings of low self-worth or guilt and a reduced ability to enjoy life. And these are symptoms that persist every day for at least two weeks. That's what the DSM-5 says for the diagnosis. Anxiety, characterized by feelings of worry or fear that are strong enough to interfere with your daily activities. And that, basically, you know, the, the really, really primitive part of your brain, the lizard brain, the amygdala, it's when it just says everything's going to kill you or everything, or you need to eat. It's those two. It's a fight or flight, feed or breed. Uh, PTSD is a failure to recover after experiencing or witnessing a terrifying event. And the best analogy that I've heard about that is comparing our brains to a computer. Kind of makes sense, right? You've got your RAM, short term memory, and you've got your storage, the long term memory. The RAM is right there, connected to the CPU. Information's going back and forth, back and forth, really quick. Uh, the storage, a little bit longer. A lot longer when we were using mechanical for the most part, but you know, still a little bit longer. But what happens in PTSD is your, your event gets caught right in that RAM, right in the short-term memory, and it never processes it back to the storage. So anything, a sight, sound, smell, anything can just make you rerun whatever it is that's living in there. And that, at least to me, it made a lot of sense and really cleared up how this is happening and what's happening. ADHD is varying degrees of hyperactivity, impulsivity, and inattention that lead to difficulty in academic, emotional, and social functioning. Um, when I was a kid, this was looked at as being a bit odd, which I take pride in now, but it was, you know, nobody really wanted to put a label on it, just go burn off some energy. So I did get treatment, but before that, let me summarize. It was difficult, boiled down difficult, because I was afraid. I was paranoid about everything. I had a crippling fear of everyday things, you know, the lizard brain just saying, that's going to kill you, that's going to kill you. Oh, if you're going to drive to school, that's going to kill you. And social situations were paralyzing. I was also very angry. Again, that lizard brain. And what does a lizard do when it's scared? It says, go away, flashes out. I had a mix of a high stress job on an ambulance and untreated anxiety and depression, and it wasn't a good combination. Um, I don't know if anybody knows this, but people who work in public service generally don't like to admit that they have issues or that they have a problem that should be addressed. You know, the, the physician heal thyself. No, if, if I'm supposed to be helping you, I should not have anything wrong with me, so I'm not going to get treated because there's nothing wrong with me. And I can count, unfortunately, it takes two hands to count, uh, people that I've worked with who have fallen uh, to either suicide or you know, overdoses because of untreated mental illness. Fortunately for me, I sought treatment. I never got to that point. I realized something was, was difficult and different. I was also alone because I would cancel plans and I'd make myself alone. I'd find a way to be alone in crowded spaces. And I'd always worry, you know, back to that anxiety that people were looking at me for any flaws whatsoever. Like, you know, do I have a booger hanging out? Is there a piece of corn in my beard? Who's paying attention to me? Did I drop some coffee on my shirt? 
really nobody cares. Nobody's just going around, unless you're a real jerk, going around looking for you know, things on other people. But all of these also made me misunderstood because people thought I was angry when I was really terrified of being wherever I was or just trying not to screw up. And you know, it's easier to lash out at people than to say, hey, I'm going through something because you don't want to say you're going through something, but being, being a jerk is, you know, that's perfectly acceptable. This was the hardest step for me, accepting something was wrong. I saw other people living happy lives. They weren't going through nearly the same things that I was. People didn't get upset like I did about the smallest things. And people weren't affected by normal things like I was. So one day I kind of had an epiphany that maybe everybody else wasn't the issue. Maybe it was this guy. It's kind of like if everywhere you go smells like dog shit, look at your own shoes. That might be the problem. And th this is the hardest part. But after I realized, hey, I've got to do something, I got treatment. And it's different for everybody. What works for me may not work for you. Uh, medication and therapy work for me. Your mileage may vary. But I'm not shy about talking about it either, obviously. I normally don't go into details, you know, why do I have the PTSD, blah, blah, blah. You know, I have it. That's, that's all anybody really needs to know. So I told you about before treatment, now life after treatment. I'm not ashamed of who I am. I'm not too proud to admit that I need, need help. The valleys are much, much easier to cope with. So if you're familiar with depression, there can be peaks and valleys, and the valleys can get really, really, really low. They can go on for days to the point where you can't get out of bed or, or worse. I still have bad days, but I, they're a little bit more shallow, they don't last as long, and they're much more tolerable. My anxiety has gone down a lot. Uh, I still have the occasional panic attack. Like, probably about 20 minutes ago, I was having one just knowing that I'm <laughs> walking in here. But I'm more comfortable with myself, uh, which really helps my brain. I still have the occasional uh, issues with losses, but I take losses a little bit better. When I say losses, I mean, you know, if something doesn't go my way or the way I was hoping, I don't, you know, the world is out to get me. It's like, okay, let's move on. I, I used to be terrified because I couldn't focus on anything. I used to be terrified of losing my job because I wouldn't be productive enough and that people would just kick me out. Um, so I don't have that fear anymore. Again, big thing though, I also realized that we're not alone. I said it before, I'll say it again. We're not alone. I was afraid because of the way people would view me because I thought nobody else was going through it like I was, nobody else would understand, but it's not true. And part of the reason I feel that way is an organization called OSME. Now, a few of you raised your hand, said that you know what OSME is. The, the very high level overview of OSME is it's an organization founded by Ed Finkler about five or six years ago with the sole mission of uh, erasing the stigma around mental illness in the tech community specifically. And the way we do that is by speaking, um, doing surveys. We have some forums online and uh, a couple handbooks that I'll talk about a little bit later. But it's a great organization. I, I really highly recommend that you, you look it up uh, or ask me about it. I, I will talk at length about it. But I only have another 15 minutes, so I'm going to cut myself off there. Big question that I get when I say I'm doing this talk, mental illness in tech, is why tech? What's so different? What's so special about us? I, I venture to say, and I've, I have citations on my speaker notes, I'm not going to invite you all up here to look at it, but some studies have shown that creative people, and I'd say that programmers, developers, designers, you know, we're, we're all, you know, those of us who work in tech, even the hardware, it takes some level of creativity to come up with something. But studies have shown that we're more prone to depression and of anxiety. There was some anecdotal evidence. There used to be the forum called devpressed.com uh, that Osme kind of absorbed and were really active, you know, keeping an eye out on that. Uh, that was kind of, you know, signaling that there was something wrong. And when I say that creative people are more prone, what I mean is that we tend to overthink things and over, think over situations more and more. 
we like to see how do we get from X to Y and why didn't it go to Z? And we relive it, relive it, and trying to better understand it, but by trying to better understand, it just gets more embedded and it could lead to feelings of depression, hopelessness. Okay, why didn't I get this job? Why doesn't this render the way I'm looking for? Why didn't my mail come? Why did my dog die? Relive it, how could I have changed this? It's gotta be my fault somehow. Another thing that is, it's prevalent everywhere, but I see it a lot in the tech community is imposter syndrome. Who's heard of that? Yeah, I, yeah, it's not a secret. A lot of us go through it. The basic, you know, again, high level, it's a feeling you don't deserve to be doing what you're doing. You haven't earned it, and I go through that all the time. Right now, what the hell am I doing here? I'm talking at DrupalCon to a room full of people who are probably 10 times as smart as I am, and I don't know why you're all here, but thank you for coming. <laughs> uh, I try to deal with it. The best thing that I do to deal with it is take a compliment because I can't do that. If somebody says something nice to me, I usually just, <laughs> yeah, okay, whatever, you're, you're no, no, that's no. Uh, but I'm getting better at just saying thank you. All right, I've talked for quite a bit. I've got more questions for you after I take a drink because it's dry up here. All right, so this might be silly, but, but answer. Would you tell someone with glasses or contacts to try looking harder? Not a lot of yeses, okay. Have you ever asked somebody in a wheelchair why they decided not to walk? Be pretty rude, right? You ever tell somebody with a heart condition to snap out of it? You don't need your meds? Yeah, they, they all seem ridiculous. Would you tell someone with depression to try being happy? Would you ask someone in a panic attack if they've ever tried you know, to not have anxiety? Would you tell someone with ADHD to stop taking their meds and just focus? So that, that's the stigma right there. We see, I mean, we all know what a meme is. We see this, and if you can't read it, nice beautiful picture of a forest saying this is an antidepressant and a picture of pills that saved my life called saying this is shit. This one goes around, I don't need pills to be happy. Well, good for you, I do. <laughs> and, and this one, one of my favorites, I know the text is pretty small, but it, you know, Morpheus, what if I told you you don't need antidepressants if you lift? Um, some people, yeah, exercise works for them. It didn't work for me. But a lot of these are just saying it's a decision to feel this way. You can snap your fingers and make yourself happy. Uh, I can vouch for the effects of medication, obviously. And every person is different. And what works for me won't work for somebody else. It might work, but you know, don't shame somebody for <laughs> using the path they take. Fortunately, we have our own. Memes go both ways. And if you can't read that, because that's really tiny on that big screen, it says, if you can't make your own neurotransmitters, store-bought is fine. <laughs> so what do we do to erase the stigma? The biggest thing we can do is being stronger than fear. And that doesn't mean trying to beat your fear at arm wrestling. It means starting the conversation, listen to people, let people know they matter, let people know they're not going through it alone. Don't be ashamed. If you have mental illness, it's not a choice. It's a disease, you're not damaged. And try to be respectful, that's a huge thing because not all disabilities are visible. Think of how you're saying things, think of how you're portraying things, think, think of what might be minifying what somebody else is going through. Just because you're having a bad day, if you're not diagnosed with depression, it doesn't mean that you're depressed. Just because you like your desk, desk organized doesn't mean that you have OCD. I, I did a talk similar to this and the woman who spoke before me had OCD and she was telling her story. And the way that she put it, and I just can't fathom even thinking this way, and I can't, is, is that, imagine you're allergic to blueberries. You know if you take a blueberry, it's going to cause you significant personal or, or physical damage, even kill you. But if you don't eat that blueberry, you think everybody that you care about is going to die. So it's just that compulsion that you have to do this thing or the world will end if you don't do it. That's OCD saying, oh, I prefer it this way. 
that's not, that's, that's just being an organized person. But if you do feel that you have a disease, if any of those symptoms, get treatment, get checked out, go see a doctor, see a therapist. All right, so uh, one of the things I told you that OSME does, we do surveys. We have science. I have a lot of anecdotes, but I also have facts. Uh, the survey we do, it's an annual survey. Uh, we put it out to several different communities. It started off, um, again, about four or five years ago. The 2017 one is the last one that we've tabulated all the data. We're still going through everything from 2018. Uh, that one had about 800 responses. I do have some 2016 answers on here because that had um, 1,500 responses, so twice as many, a little bit bigger sample size. This was made available to several, several different communities in the U.S., and all of these are self-reported. They're also anonymous. Uh, one of the questions, would you bring up a physical health issue with a potential employer or at an interview? Or not at, or at, an, at an interview. Physical health, maybe 40. No, 37, yes, 23. So it's kind of evenly distributed, not horrible. But when it goes to mental health issue, that yes is just a tiny, tiny little piece of the pie. The no is 69%, so it's a definite no. From the 2016 survey, do you feel that being identified as a person with mental health issue would hurt your career? Um, I know it's too small to read that, but that tiny little Red sliver is the no, it has not. And the one next to it, the blue, is no, I don't think it would. That's in total 12% in the negative, thinking that it would not hurt their career if they were identified or called out on it. This is something I worry about every time I give this talk, but it's also very, very freeing, knowing that all my cards are on the table, and if somebody searches my name, they're probably going to find one of these videos done by the great Kevin Thal uh, at various camps. And if you don't know Kevin, he's, he's an awesome guy. Um, he does a lot of recording around, but that has nothing to do with this. I just really like him. Um, so do you think discussing a health issue with your employer would have negative consequences? I did a side-by-side -side on this one, mental and physical. Really tiny numbers, I apologize. The, the chart didn't scale very well. But the uh, mental negative consequences, yes, is about 23%. The uh, physical, yes, is 4%. Five, or five times more people think that there would definitely be negative consequences if they were identified or discussing it with their employer. That's horrible. Have you been diagnosed with a mental health condition? Again, full disclaimer, this is self-reported. The average in the US is about uh, 20% and we had 800 responses. No is 58 and yes is 42% of people who responded from the tech community have been diagnosed with a mental health condition. Now, do you think you have a mental health condition? This includes those who've been diagnosed, so the yes is uh, still the 43% or 42. Uh, but the possibly, again, I apologize for the small up there if you can't read it, the, the possibly is 19%. So that's a pretty significant chunk of the pie of people who either do or think that they have mental illness. So my conclusions on these are that it we're afraid to talk about mental illness, especially if we're the ones suffering from it, but it also means that we're not alone. We're afraid because of the stigma around it. Mental illness has a stigma, it's horrible, I'm trying to get rid of it, that's what I'm doing here. And we're afraid that being honest is gonna hurt us in some way. We're afraid people will change their opinion of us, uh, especially coworkers, worrying what people think if you have anxiety can be terrifying. Some of our minds go straight to the worst case scenario, like mine personally. If, if for some reason the email server's down and I can't log in, I immediately start looking for another job because I think that it means I've been fired and they just haven't told me yet. Mike, please make sure that the <laughs> email servers work. Uh, I've got you know, a, a kind of a binary mind where if it's not good, it's bad, but if it is good, it's gonna be bad soon, so I might as well prep for that. So it's not quite binary, but something like that. A in the workplace, we're afraid that we might get sent to the HR department. How many of you talk with HR on a regular basis for either good or bad things? It's a very, very small chunk of the people in here. I could not point out my HR people in, in a lineup if I had to. Um, but I did have one position where I disclosed I have depression, I need a day off, and I was immediately hung up on with a 
goodbye, I can't talk about this. And then I got a call back from HR who, it took me forever to build up the courage to talk to the direct supervisor who I talk to on a daily basis. Now I have to talk to a complete stranger and say, hey, yeah, here's everything personal about my life. And this was before I was getting full treatment and on medication, so it was even worse for me. Uh, but it's difficult. In 2015, 17.9% of all U.S. adults had some form of mental illness. That's quite a bit. In the tech community, quite a bit more. Uh, I think the 2016 survey, we had right down the middle, 50-50 split of diagnosis or think. Uh, but why should a workplace care about that? What, what's in it for them? Well, it's estimated to cause 200 million lost work days each year which can cost employers up to 44 billion, with a B, dollars annually. That's a lot of money. So as the site is asking me, how do you eat an elephant? You do it one bite at a time. If a workplace can create a culture of inclusiveness, then an employee may feel more comfortable being open. They may feel included. They may feel like it's not, you know, they're not being a burden. I used to do very, very little for days, and I'd get angry that I couldn't function because I wasn't doing anything, and I'd get afraid because I wasn't succeeding or putting out what was expected. But if in one of those old positions I would have felt comfortable enough to say, I need a day off, I need to recharge, then, or if the managers would have been able to recognize, hey, what's wrong? Things probably would have been a lot different. Uh, so this is one thing that could just do volumes for anybody. Create that culture of inclusion. Find a way to, to help out. Another thing that all of you in this room can do to help out is we do surveys at OSME. Uh, OSMEhelp.org slash research. It takes about 20 minutes. It's not a short one, but every response is amazing and helps out a lot. Uh, and I'll have these slides online after this because I put a few more slides than time allotted, so I'm going through kind of quickly. We can also fight ignorance with information. Um, one thing that we can also do for HR managers or really anyone is find a mental health first aid class. It's not telling you how to treat things, it's how to recognize and how to react appropriately. Also, we can take the OSME 2019 survey. Every response helps out and uh, could really use the information. We like data. At OSME, we also have the handbooks that I mentioned way, way 20 some minutes ago. Um, and you know, OSME is a nonprofit, 501c3 blah, 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 uh, and the handbooks are mental health and tech, guidelines for mental wellness in the workplace, guidelines for executives and HR professionals, and guidelines for employees. These are all vetted uh, through the ADA. We have lawyers and all that good stuff, um, but it's DRM free, and I think that for all three of them, it's $10. And we could take the OSME 2019 survey, which really, really helps. Every answer helps. <laughs> uh, so. One thing that we have here, we're an open source tech conference. Community here is amazing. Uh, that's what open source is. It is community coming together for a, a joint purpose. On those surveys, 43% said diagnosis. 20% more than that said, I think I do. Again, I keep saying this, but it, mainly to tell myself this, we're not alone. Also, we're more than just usernames. That's what events like this remind us of, meetups, camps, cons, whatever you go to. We're real people. We're not ones and zeros. We're not just some comment on a forum or in the issue queue. We're here interacting. We're not damaged. That's a big thing. We're not damaged. We have a disease. We, we, it's not a choice. It's a disability. And together, we can erase a stigma. I've got some resources available for you. OsmeHelp.org is you know, what I've been gushing about for the last 30 minutes. Psychology Today is a Drupal site, and they also have a therapist finding tool. Um, National Association on Mental Illness, I don't know why you'd want to call them, you might want to look up instead. Uh, the Suicide Lifeline, if you are going through a crisis or know somebody who is also 911 or your country's equivalent, um, don't hesitate. So I want to thank you all for letting me talk with you. I have the obligatory feedback slides. The session survey is available on the session node. The Drupal con survey is on SurveyMonkey words. And 
we're almost out of time, so I'm going to skip the questions for now. Uh, you can ask me out in the hall. But the contribution opportunities, right in 6A, uh, mentor contribution, first time workshop, general contribution happening tomorrow. It's a really good way to get back to the community and you know, anybody who wants to find a way to get back to Drupal, they can find a place for you to do it. All right, well, it's 12 o'clock on the dot. Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs>